Good evening, Shabbat Shalom, Chag Sameach, and welcome to our 30th virtual Shabbat service. While things may seem like they're slowing down after the high holy days, we are still working hard for you. The Zoom Tachlis, Tachlis means getting down to brass tacks. Our Zoom Tachlis Wednesday group is continuing to meet and discuss interesting Jewish issues. The Buch Havara will continue to meet monthly. We were meeting in groups of 10 outside. It's getting a little bit cold now, so we're moving to a Zoom platform for our next book, which is called The Newark Minutemen. Religious school continues to meet every Sunday, and you should only see all the kids on that Zoom screen. Well, if you'd like more information, see our newsletter. You can go to beneville.org to get on the mailing list. We also want to thank you for your very positive feedback about the High Holy Day services. It was a lot of work from our end and certainly with Cantor Michelle putting it all together for all of us to enjoy these High Holy Days. As of today, we have counted over 4,200, 4,200 views who have joined us for the High Holy Days. So many more than if we had services in the chapel from all over the country, all over the world, you were able to join us. And although we miss you very much, we look forward to our reunion in healthier times. So in the meantime, wash your hands, wear your mask, keep your distance and stay at home if you're ill. Give me a call, I'd love to talk to you, chat. If there's anything I can do for you, please give me a call. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom and happy Sukkot. Welcome to our Sukkah. Please join me with Cantor Michelle as we bless the Shabbat and Yom Tov candles. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Ha'olam Asher Kitshanu B'mitzvotav V'tzivanu Le'hadlik Lehadlik ner shall Shabbat v'shel Yom Tov. Shabbat Shalom and Yom Tov. Upon arriving in Jerusalem, the pilgrims lifted their eyes to the mountains and they cried out in unison, "From where does my help come?" And with a singular voice, they answered, "My help comes from God, Maker of heaven and earth." We continue now with the cantor, a sign.
we pray may we have just enough. Source of all goodness, as we join together in prayer, we reflect on the blessings that are always within our reach. May we feel healthy enough to arise in the morning and enjoy all that this beautiful valley gives us each day. May we have enough wealth to be able to take care of our own needs and compassion enough to share our abundance with others. May we have enough wisdom to recognize our own faults and not blaming others, working toward being that better person. May we have enough patience to not easily become disheartened, knowing that with faith in the future, tomorrow will be a better day. Amen. The prayer of Shalom Alechem means, Peace be unto you. It was written by the Kabbalists, the Jewish mystics of Sfat, in the late 16th century. Well, this traditional song signals the arrival of Shabbat, welcoming the angels of peace, who accompany a person home on the eve of Shabbat. As we join with the cantor, Shalom Aleichem. Let me now continue with the prayer of gratitude. Because as the sun can be seen high above the sky of the mountains of Vail, we gather together appreciative of the many gifts we enjoy. This Shabbat, amidst the peacefulness of these surroundings, let us no longer focus on that which we desire, but rather upon what we already savor, the quietness of the creek and the soft mountain air. We thank you each day for health of body, mind, and spirit, and let our daily actions reflect our gratefulness of our lives every moment with every breath. As we recite our prayers surrounded by family and friends, let us joyfully lift our voices in song, grateful to God, who has given us the blessings of Shabbat. Amen. From the walls of Jerusalem came out a call to worship. Our call to worship as we rise and continue with the cantor in the chanting of Baruch Hu.
The prayer Ahavat Olam reminds us that God is with us in good times and in bad. Well, taking the words of Moses and Joshua, the author of this prayer, they place in their words in a context of when there is darkness, we pray that God provides protection until the sun rises in the morning. Our rabbi said Ahavat Olam is to be chanted gently as the rain on a new plant and as lightly as dew falling on the grass. As we now continue with the most ancient prayer found within our service, we invite the Levy girls to lead all of us in the singing of Shema. As the cantor continues with the singing of the Shamru, in six days the Lord created the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he ceased from his work and rested. The cantor continues the Shamru. <laughs> Shamayim 
As the waters closed upon the pursuing Egyptians, the Israelites were now free to sing Micha Mocha as we join with the cantor. Rav Nachman wrote, Adonai, grant me the ability to be alone, and may it be my custom to go outdoors each day, among the trees and grasses and all growing things, there to be alone and enter into prayer, as the cantor continues in the singing of Rav Nachman's prayer.
The Birkat HaGomel prayer offers gratitude for the miracle of healing, full restoration for one's health to family and friends, and indeed, full restoration to life itself. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam HaGomel L'chayavim Tovot Sheg Gimalani Kol Tov Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the Universe, who bestows kindness upon each of us and who has bestowed goodness upon me. May God, who has bestowed kindness upon us, continue to bestow every goodness upon each of us forever. Well, we've now arrived at that time in our service where we think about those in our community who are in need of healing, healing of body, mind, or spirit. If you have a person in your life or in your heart that's in need of healing, take a moment now, think about them as we offer a prayer for them. As the cantor now continues with the chanting of Adonai Svatai, we're reminded through the prayer to be not afraid of silence because it's more powerful than the unpolished word. It allows God's voice to be heard. It allows tears and doubt to tumble out. Be there with quiet compassion that flows from the depths of your being, through your eyes, your touch, your sighs, into your very soul. Be not afraid of silence. As the cantor continues, Adonai Svatai. Adonai Svatai Titach Ufi Agitei Latecha Adonai Svatai Titach Ufi agitei latecha. Our 
Let's take a moment now for a thought and a prayer. As we recite our Yisker prayers, this is the second of four times recited each year. Yom Kippur, Shmini Atzeret, which is tonight, Pesach and Shavuos. It's a time to remember, and most of us come to Yisker well, we come to remember parents or children, siblings or spouses and grandparents. Some of us remember a dear friend, a favorite aunt or uncle. We feel their absence in our lives and gather to remember them four times a year. And we think about the influence they had on us. Well, Yizkor, it comes from Zachor, it means to remember, not just those who have passed away, but let's remember those who are with us today. But there are other people special people who have played an important role in our lives. And I'm thinking about my teachers. And this week was World Teacher Week. Have you ever considered how many teachers we've had in a lifetime? Our first teachers were our parents, our grandparents. But in addition to family, we've had dozens, hundreds of teachers beginning in nursery school, through college, and yes, beyond. And it's these teachers who have left a mark on our lives, these teachers who also deserve to be remembered today. In Pirkei Avot, the ethics of our fathers, we're taught one who learns a single chapter or verse, even an expression from another person, is obligated to pay him honor. Well, King David, we're told, King David only learned two things from one of his advisors, Achitophel. And yet, David would forego his royal status, and David always referred to Achitophel as my master, my guide. Achitophel is my friend. If you're fortunate somewhere along the way that you had a teacher who not only gave you specific knowledge and skills, but touches something about life, they helped you shape your personality in profound ways. They not only lectured, but also knew how to listen to you. They knew how to listen. They had the patience to share insight or even maybe some gentle criticism with you at the right time, the right place, and in just the right way. Well, this Shabbat is Simchat Torah. It's the end of our festival of Sukkot. And it celebrates and marks the conclusion and the annual cycle of the public Torah reading. It's the beginning of a new cycle. So let's take a moment to remember the greatest Jewish teacher, Moses. Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, our teacher, who, yes, gave us the Torah. We read in the Torah that Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eyes were undimmed, his vigor unabated. Never again did there arise in Israel, we're told, a prophet, a teacher like Moses. Though the Torah refers to Moses as Navi, a prophet, well, we call Moses Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, our teacher, because long after Moses' lifetime, he continues to teach us. Now, I remember a lesson taught to me in one of my Talmud classes. It's a story when God allows Moses to visit the classroom of Rabbi Akiva. Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, our teacher, comes down from heaven sits in the back row of the classroom and just listens as Rabbi Akiva interprets the, vo the verses of Moses' Torah for his students. Well, the Talmud says that Moses became distressed. He had no clue what Rabbi Akiva was talking about. Well, when a student asked Rabbi Akiva how he came up with the Midrash, this interpretation of the verses of Moses' Torah, Rabbi Akiva answered, it's a tradition we received from Moses at Mount Sinai. Well, Moses, we're told, was then comforted by these words as he realized that Akiva's students not only repeated his teachings directly from the words of the Torah, but they learned to explain his teachings as well. Well, this Talmudic lesson taught me that it's the job of the student to pick up where the teacher leaves off and then to develop their own thinking from what they've learned and to carry on with new ideas, inventions, ways to meet contemporary issues with a strength and vitality of a new generation. We read in the Torah that Moses' eyes 
were undimmed and his vigor unabated when he died. And even in death, Moses' vision lived on. So it's our prayer that we will always see the world through the lessons of our teachers. We carry on where they left off. May it always be the sign of a great teacher, a great teacher to be someone who communicates passion and cultivates a vision that lives on. Well, Avraham Joshua Heschel said, what we need more than anything else are not textbooks, but text people. It's the personality of the teacher, which is the text that the pupils read. That text they will never forget. So take a moment, take a moment and think back. Who influenced you over the years? What did you learn from them? Who inspired you? What were the most important lessons about being Jewish that you learned? And who is it that you want to remember tonight? Amen. The cantor will now continue with the beautiful song, Yesh Kochavim, There Are Stars Up Above, as we remember. We remember those who are looking down upon us and will always be with us. Cantor will now continue with the singing of Al Male, our memorial prayer. Please rise. <laughs>
As I mentioned, part of our service this evening are our Yisker prayers. Please take a moment now to remember your loved ones during this moment of our Yisker prayers. loved and lost are with us here tonight as the sun sets behind the mountains. When we gather together in the sparkle of the fall and snow, when the blossoms open on the trees, they are with us. When we marvel at the blueness of the skies and the golden color of the aspen trees, they are with us. It is our memories of being with them that keep them alive. For as long as we live and recall their stories, they live too. Our loved ones will always be part of who we are, and they are with us. Please join with me now in reciting the Mourner's Kaddish. Yitzka dal v'yitzka dash shemei raba, v'yalma divrach hirute v'yamlich malchute, V'chayechon v'yomechon uv'chaye d'chol beit Yisrael b'galav izman kari v'imramein Yehesh me raba mevarach le'olam ome omaya Yitbarach v'yishtabach v'yitpaar v'yitzramam v'yitnase v'yitadar v'yitalev v'yitalal shemei d'kudesha b'richu L'eila min kol b'rchata v'shirata tush b'chata v'nechemata damiran v'yalma v'imramein Yeheshlam araba min shamaya v'chayim aleinu v'yal ko Yisrael v'imramein. Ose shalom v'imramav, hu ya'ase shalom aleinu v'yal ko Yisrael v'imramein. Let me offer this closing prayer. Let the rain come and wash away the ancient grudges, the bitter hatreds held and nurtured over generations. Let the rain wash away the memory of hurt, the neglect, but then let the sun come out and fill the sky with rainbows. Let the warmth of the sun heal us wherever we're broken. Let it burn away the fog so that we can see each other clearly, so that we can see beyond labels, beyond accents, gender, or skin color. Adonai oz liamoyitain, Adonai varechet amova shalom, may the Lord grant strength to his people and bless all peoples with peace. Amen and Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom and Chag Sameach. Please join us with Cantor Michelle as we do Kiddush and Motzi. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Bore pori hagafen. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Hamotzi lechem min haaretz, Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.